Um, hi guys, it's Rain Malaysia, so I'm reacting to Dots on Out. Extremely embarrassing for me. I'm going to tell you some things that some of my closest friends don't know about me. So if you know me in real life, or if you're like my future boss or grandchild watching this, then please... Alright. Things that I do that adults probably don't do. I close my closet door before I go to sleep every night. Okay, so this one's not super embarrassing, but why do I do this? I know monsters aren't real. Sometimes I'll already be in my bed, open my eyes just a tiny bit, and see the black void of my closet. And then I have to get up and close it. It makes me uncomfortable, I don't know why. It's not like there's a monster in my closet that's been waiting for like 18 years for the one night I forget to close my door. I just don't like it open. Also, I'm terrified of crossing streets. I will always speed walk across the street while checking both directions. Why? Why? Why, James? Just run! I did that one, one before that I didn't fall down. And there was a car, so I need to cook like fast, and then I make it. It was like one inch close. Yeah, let's keep going. Every two seconds. I think part of the reason why I'm afraid is because when I was little, my mom told me the way cars were made, drivers can't see little kids at all. Which I'm going to call bullcrap on that, mom, unless you're driving like a monster truck. So whenever I would cross the street and see a car in the distance, I would have to run as fast as I possibly could. I didn't want to die. So I guess that fear stayed with me as I grew up. And I remember in high school, some kids would walk across the street without looking both ways. Not even a glance. They were just like, the car better stop for me. Even if they're already going 50, it's their fault. So if me and you are ever walking together, and suddenly I start speed walking, you'll know why. I watch Minecraft videos, and I don't even play Minecraft anymore. What happened was, is that I started watching them while I drew comics. If I didn't feel like listening to music, or Netflix didn't have any good movies to watch, I would watch the Minecraft videos, specifically Captain Sparkles. I don't know if any of you have heard of him, he's a pretty small gaming channel. And I started watching more and more, and I kind of got attached to the point where if I had no idea what to draw, I would still watch the Minecraft videos anyway. And I'll promise you right now that I watched some Captain Sparkles while making this video. Okay, I talk to my dogs. Or rather, I talk for my dogs. I give my pets certain voices, and I talk to them in my voice, and then respond for them in their voice. And for some reason, they're pretty mean to me. I have two dogs, and they both make an appearance in this comic. This one, named Poppy, has a voice like this. And this one, Georgie, talks like a so a normal thing for me to do is... Oh, hi, Poppy. No. You're in my spot, Poppy. Mm, I know. Can you move? Mm, no. But I was sitting there first. Well, I'm sitting here now, so why don't you find a place on the floor? <gasps> Poppy! The dog has no idea what's going on, and I've created this scenario now where I'm sad and sitting on the floor. Their voice is very nice, I guess. But when you make puppy, wait, what is the name again? Wait a second. <gasps> puppy, the dog has no idea. James. I am very impressed of you making Poppy voice. I really like it. I hope you you reach over. Oh, sorry. 
Ooh. over 2 million likes on this video. Yeah, okay, whatever. Um, I... I'm at Malaysia. Um, if you see me... Um, you can't really see me, so... I hope I meet you. At VidCon, because... But I didn't go to VidCon. Because I'm at Malaysia. I hope I can go to Arizona and meet you guys. So, Jaden Animations and Dots on As James and Jaden. I hope you meet, I meet you in Arizona. But I don't know if I'm going to go there. So yeah, let's keep going. What's going on? And I've created this scenario now where I'm sad and sitting on the floor to watch my Minecraft. Only me and my sister know that I do this. I don't know what I'd tell someone if they walked in on me and saw me doing this. But now I guess everyone knows. Oh, hello. I have a voice too, and I talk like this. Mm, shut up. There's more. Um, the next one, we're gonna check. So imagine this, it's Christmas Eve. You're getting ready for bed and everything is prepared for the perfect Christmas morning. Oh, no. Chestnuts are roasting on. My first memory as a child okay. is being strapped down with belts to a chair while a dentist rips out all my teeth as I scream bloody murder against. Um, if you guys subscribe to me more, I can make more videos with more things and I hope I, I actually get where I wanted to go and show you guys what I was actually planning to make you guys subscribe to me not planning to when I got a lot of money I will do something incredible just can not that insane but we're just gonna watch my will so yeah please subscribe to me that's not true. But ever since I was little, I've had a really intense fear of the dentist. I'm not sure why. I mean, yeah, going to the dentist is a bit freaky. But even as an adult, I understand the fact that I'm not in any danger. And the dentist is just trying to pick out bits of plaque I've built up over the past six months. If anything, I should be scared of how much they charge. Even though I know this, my body still shakes uncontrollably when they do anything more than floss my teeth. Which is still kind of scary because they're always so aggressive about it. Every memory I have of going to the dentist while I was a kid is filled with me just bawling my eyes out during the entire process and then getting a little toy from their toy machine because I was, quote, so good. I mean, you're not fooling anyone. Even I knew that was just a load of bull. No, I still want it. When I was in sixth grade, my parents decided to finally slap some braces on my mouth. My teeth were pretty straight, but I had an overbite, so I just looked like a nice horse. My mom made an appointment with the orthodontist to talk about the process, and while there, he told me I've still got five baby teeth, and I'll need to pull them out before I get braces for common sense purposes. So they sent me out, and I basically had a month to pull out all five teeth before they were going to have to rip them out for me, which I did not like the idea of. The imagery of them sticking a needle in my mouth fueled both my motivation and intense overwhelming fear and I wiggled those five baby boys every single day since that meeting. A few of them weren't even wiggling yet so it was going to be a race against the clock. Does anyone want to get into a fight? By the end of the month, I managed to pull out three teeth on my own. A PB. But it wasn't enough, which meant my mom was going to have to schedule that dreaded nightmare appointment where they were going to shove needles down my throat. I was in the living room and could hear her make the call, which made my stomach sink, and I felt petrified that Doomsday was going to be my reality in a few days. I could hear them preparing all 100 needles and barbed wire over the phone. That little reality check was enough to fear charge me into new power 
power levels because maybe an hour or two after she confirmed the appointment with the orthodontist, I'd ripped out the last two of my teeth. The conversation where my mom had to cancel the extraction appointment two hours after she booked it was the biggest feeling of relief I've ever had. She also ended up paying me 75 bucks because she said I just saved her like 500 for yanking the teeth out myself and not having to pay the dentist to do it. Wow. The tooth fairy been scamming me for years. What a happy ending to the story. Jaden went on to never have anything scary done to her teeth. She continued to live a happy life, only needing to go to the dentist for cleanings and no freaky mouth procedures for the rest of her days. She got her horse teeth fixed and the rest is history. So last year in June, I had to get my wisdom teeth taken out. My wisdom teeth had been growing in and shoving their aggressiveness into the sweet harmony of my existing teeth for a few years. My mom intended to get them removed when I turned 18, but I think she forgot, and I thought I could get away with it, but they were starting to get really painful and annoying. One was coming in sideways, which made my gums get in the way while I ate, which made me only chew food on the left side of my mouth for like a whole year. I'd had enough and figured I just needed to get it over with and have them removed. Out. I scheduled an appointment to get them removed on June 11th and braced for impact the rest of the week. Before the extraction, they wanted to have a meeting with me to discuss the process of what they're doing and how they're doing it. They put on one of those 90s informational videos and everything seemed fine until we got to the part where it was talking about sedation. In the video, they said that some sort of gas is used to induce conscious sedation, the kind that makes you really loopy and not remember anything. But then the nurse piped in and said, we don't do that here and let the video continue. So what, I'm just gonna be fully conscious while you needle and drill and probe my mouth? <laughs> Answer the question! After the video, I said, uh, so is there a way I can be at least semi-unconscious for this? The nurse prescribed me medication called Valium that'll help calm me down, which was relieving to hear. All I wanted was to not be conscious. I picked it up and the day came. I'm excited to not be conscious. My roommate and I got into the car to take me to the appointment, and that's when it really sunk in. This medication isn't doing anything for me, and I am extremely conscious. Do you have any chloroform? Apparently, yeah. Valium's supposed to relax you enough so that you're awake, but don't really care what's happening. But by the time the dentist was calling me back to the chair, my nerves were still going haywire. Proof of consciousness. I desperately asked the dentist if I could take another one because one pill wasn't doing enough for me, but she said I'll be fine. Okay. They leaned me back in the chair, put that mouth opener thing in my mouth, put sunglasses on me so I don't hurt my sensitive little eyes, and put the first okay. needle into my mouth. And that's when I couldn't hold it anymore. Fear was overwhelming me the entire day, but that was the moment it really got me. Tears burst down my face and I was trying desperately not to make that annoying <laughs> noise when you're trying not to cry too hard, but you need to breathe, but you'd breathe too much. I kept apologizing because I knew physically I was fine. There wasn't any pain I couldn't tolerate. They hadn't really done anything yet and I was being irrational. But just the idea that I was awake and present was so intense and I couldn't handle it. <laughs> I didn't do that, but I wanted to. I was able to compose myself after a few minutes and they kept going, but the sounds of them sawing my tooth in half and yanking it out of my gums and God knows what else, probably just playing tic-tac-toe with needles in there for the <laughs> heck of it, was horrifying. I'm not scared of much and I'm relatively reasonable for the most part, so it was really surprising and eye-opening to feel genuine, uncontrollable fear. Like, my head told me things were okay, but my body was freaking out and then my head was like dude chill and then my body was like all in all everything went well and i was able to go home after they finished up a few hours later since i wasn't drugged up and just super numb i didn't have much recovery to deal with other than swelling and i kind of just chilled for the rest of the day watching youtube videos the dentist even told me i can eat normal food and wasn't restricted to just soup as long as i was careful i ordered a smoothie bowl to my house and when i opened the door to take it from the guy i didn't realize until afterwards i had blood dripping out of my mouth so luckily he didn't call the police i was trying with a hundred 
100% focused to not bite my tongue because I couldn't feel it at all in my mouth and was at high risk for just biting a chunk of it off without knowing. The smoothie bowl had sliced strawberries on top, and you don't realize how much sliced strawberries resemble the texture and sound of biting into a tongue until you don't know where your tongue is in your mouth and also can't feel anything. Ha. Huh. Is that my tongue? Hmm. If I had to get my wisdom teeth out again, I highly doubt I'd be this freaked out about it. The hardest part was just not knowing what was going to happen and not being able to brace for it. But afterwards, it was like, eh, that wasn't too bad. But also thank the holy merciful gods that I don't need to do that again. So I've got an update. Oh, yeah. I think I've just been going to...